All right, well, thanks a lot for hanging out and watching the movie. Um, so I wanted the panelists just to briefly introduce themselves, maybe um, say how long you've been working in the industry, and then we'll open up to the um, audience for questions about um, anything, about like being a tattoo artist, collecting tattoos. Um, if you have questions about like me making the movie or anything like that, we'll open it up for a little bit. So I will turn it over to Jen Carmine. Hi, I'm Jen Cormeen, and I have a shop in Northwest New Jersey. What a little bit more, like your <laughs> observation about the industry, or what do you think is important about this movie? Well, it, it shows women as they really are in the industry. It doesn't try and sexualize us in any way, or or uh, try and downplay what we're what we're doing with our careers and our lives. Uh, it just shows us as tattoo artists, uh, like other tattoo artists, which I guess the alternative would be males. But, um, you know, it's pretty truthful and honest, I thought, in its portrayal. Oh, come on. Well, say something about the apprentice to that thing. What's, what's <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen McTay. I'm an apprentice with Pat. Um, they're right. Um, you have to have a lot of humility, and you've got to love it, and you have to respect it. That's a big thing. Hi. Um, my name is Emma Griffiths, and <coughs> I've been tattooing for 20 years in the city. And um, I really don't know what to say. I'm very nervous, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I did. I really like this uh, documentary. Um, I I like that it showed um, women who are tattooers, who are tattooed, who um, mothers, daughters. You know, it wasn't. Um, there was no kind of cliches, you know, and. Um, I, um, um, and I thought it was fun too, you know, it wasn't overly serious, but it, it did point, um, it did make a lot of points, um, and, um, anyway, that's all I got to say. Hi, my name's Leonie Grande, I've tattooed with Pat for almost 20 years now, I've been bothering her since pretty much she first opened up in Woodstock in 1990, and, um, I apprenticed under her, and, uh, I still kind of consider myself her apprentice, um, kind of like Jen said, that you're constantly learning and once you know it all, just jump off a bridge, you're done. Um, and as far as what people like the next few you're going to hear from went through in this business trying to get into it, I was very lucky. Um, I met Pat and the friendship turned into an apprenticeship. I didn't have to fight the battles that I know that she had to fight, and you probably had to fight, I don't know your story, but, uh, or Suzanne, or a lot of the women that came before me. Um, and uh, I've led a pretty sheltered existence in this business because of them, so I've been lucky. Thank you, Sophia. This is what you guys. You guys yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, Sofia Estrella, aka Deborah, Miss Deborah from Miss Deborah's Fountain of Youth Tattoo in Florida, St. Augustine. Um, first of all, I've been tattooing 30 years. Thank you, Beverly. Um, this was a real labor of love that uh, Beverly took on as a college project, right? No, I think. no. Well, this is beyond that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> everything wise, but um, but it was something that uh, when I was approached, uh, and it sounded like a good idea. It was at the women's convention, so it was a good place to approach for a women's film. But um, I think it's uh, she's on to something. It does portray us as normal people, which we are. Uh, a lot of us uh, uh, got very blessed to get into this industry. I was kind of a misfit in the workforce. Um, look great in a mini skirt, but that's about it. Um, so I needed something to hang on to and to uh, to make a living at. And I was born an artist, and it was instant gratification. It was something that um, allowed me to travel, uh, make a good good living, and I dedicated my life to it. It was not an industry 30 years ago that was easy to get in was a male-dominated industry, and uh, there were no computers, magazines, um, anywhere to really learn, no conventions even. 
Uh, I remember back uh, in the early first conventions, there was only maybe one every, what, three, five years or something? No, one every year. One a year, National Tattoo no, Association? No. First tattoo convention, if I may jump in here. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Pat Sinatra. I've been tattooing for 35 <laughs> years. I just completed my 35th year, and now I'm on to number 36. Yeah. I started, thank you. I started tattooing um, when there was only one other woman that I know of who was tattooing, and her name is Lola. And she was tattooing in New Jersey. She was fortunate enough to be tattooing all the cops in Richfield Park because it was illegal to tattoo in New Jersey and New York City and the five boroughs of New York. Um, so learning how to tattoo, unless you were blessed to have somebody who was willing to teach you, and they don't have to teach you, nobody has to teach you how to do this, um, you had to do it hit or miss. I did. And um, I used to be embarrassed to admit that, that I'm a self-taught tattoo artist. But now I'm really proud of saying that, that I managed to come through all of these years and I'm still a viable business and respected in the industry. And now that there is an industry, because there wasn't one before. But I could almost count the, the women tattoo artists when I started on one hand, that I really knew uh, what I could call, that I really knew, and knew about, about the same amount. And then, of course, it grew over the years, but very few and far between. There was one plucked here and there, you know, all over the world, and not very many. All right, so let's open it up to uh, you guys. What questions do you have about um, the history of women in the industry or, or folks who are collecting tattoos? Yes. Okay. Even though um, women have come like, a long way, do you still feel like men don't respect you as much in the industry, even though you've been tattooing for you know, a number of years? Anybody? Men don't respect you in any profession. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. I started tattooing about 17 years ago. I had been tattooing a couple of months. The next guy up the ladder had been tattooing, you know, about eight months. He was horrible. Just awful tattooer. He used to pull that kid off the tattoos and make me finish the tattoos. I had to help the guy who had more time than I did to complete the work that he couldn't handle. But at the same time, he'd be telling me the whole time, well, he's really going to be fantastic. He's just going to be a great tattooer. And, you know, you're, you're a girl, and you'll get by and whatever. But he's wonderful. But help him out and finish this tattoo. That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, as years have gone by, you get, you get judged on the basis of the work that you can actually do. Um, <clears throat> I taught for 34 years. And uh, I got my first tattoo when I was... Uh, 15 in high school. I had a cut out because I was told I couldn't get into college with a tattoo. They wouldn't put my picture in the yearbook because I had a tattoo. But you read your contract like I did and I started collecting now for 23 years and it got to the point where I can't get fired. I'm a damn good teacher. And I would come in shorts and a tank top on field day. Um, I drove a hearse. <laughs> I'm still a good teacher. Um, but you have to be careful. Well, uh, I, I tell people who come into the shop who are younger and they have similar concerns that um, in the perfect world you wouldn't be judged for your tattoos, but in the real world you are, and you have to pay bills in the world that is, and you have to work towards the world the way it should be. 